10%. That is how much of the population is made up of narcissists. 10% of the population is made up of extremely selfish, manipulative people that have the potential to ruin your life. So this video aims to equip you with the 15 signs you can look for that will let you know that you have a narcissist on your hands. My name is John Burt. I'm a licensed clinical social worker and therapist extraordinaire. And in today's session, I'm giving you all the information you need that will help you spot a narcissist. Let's break it down. Let's start with our first sign that you might have a narcissist on your hands. They're incredibly charming individuals. This might come as a surprise because when a lot of us think of narcissists, we expect for them to show up as completely selfish assholes. I want you to understand something about narcissists. They have a really good game, or what the young people like to call it, Riz. You'll find yourself in a relationship with a narcissist because they're really good at making impactful first impressions. At the beginning of the relationship, they will portray themselves as charming, charismatic, confident, and successful. And who wouldn't be attracted to this type of person? When you think of a narcissistic person, you may think of them as being entitled, rageful, manipulative assholes. They are these things, but narcissistic people don't show up in relationships this way. They're chameleons, shape-shifting to play the part of Mr. Perfect. They'll show up as the idealized version of the partner you've always been dreaming for. They'll pull you in with superficial displays of attention and affection, and this will have the devastating seductive effect of causing you to lower your guard and draw you in closer. The danger a narcissistic person presents to you is at the beginning of the relationship, when they first supply their charm. You'll feel desired, seen, and valued. There's excitement and connection, as the attention they give you feels amazing. But just know, at this point, they got your ass. Understand that narcissists are extremely superficial people. Making things look good comes quite easy for them. I don't want you to be paranoid the next time you enter into a relationship or think that when someone's showing you positive attention that it's some sort of red flag. What I will say is that you have to have some level of discernment. Slow things down and stop being so damn desperate to be in a relationship. Because if that's the case, then a narcissist will have their way with you. <laughs> things I want you to look for. Narcissists will show their interest and charm, but it's never going to be that deep and it's never going to last that long. This charm will last anywhere from four weeks to six months. If you stop being distracted by their outwards attempt to charm you and look for the substance, you'll find that their charm always has a superficial and vapid quality to it. There is no depth and there is no real attempt to build intimacy or closeness behind their actions. Their charm always serves a purpose, to lower your defenses, gain influence over you, and manipulate you to do the things they want you to do. Our next sign on how to spot a narcissist is that narcissists are addicts, and the drug they get off on is the validation and admiration they receive from others. You see, narcissists need external validation, and this is because they're such insecure and fragile people. Please don't be fooled by their outer confidence and arrogance, because it's all bullshit. Unlike relatively normal, healthy people, narcissists have no internal mechanism that allows them to validate themselves. Due to their traumatic childhoods, they've never been able to build a coherent sense of self. So to put this simply, they have no self-esteem. And so, the narcissist will seek attention from other people to fill this void. We call this desperate need for affirmation Narcissistic Supply. Narcissistic Supply are the hits of validation a narcissist receives when they are acknowledged as a status symbol, when they receive compliments, and when they are given the attention they so desperately crave. To a narcissist, having a video go viral is akin to taking a shot of crack. Ooh. Even negative attention like the attention they receive when they're fighting with their partner feels good because it usually leads them to dominating and forcing their partner to submit to their will. <laughs> Getting the supply is what motivates much of the narcissist's behavior. Like any crackhead, a narcissist's mood is entirely dependent on if they're getting their supply or not. And if they don't get enough of this supply, then their mood turns rather dark, as they need their daily hit of admiration for survival. When they don't receive the validation they believe they're entitled to, they will become irritable, resentful, sullen, and aggrieved. Understand this. In the narcissist's world, everyone around them must bring the supply. And if you don't, you will face their wrath. Next, we have a core pillar of narcissism, and that is that narcissists are extremely selfish people. We call this egocentricity. Egocentricity centers around a person who's only capable of thinking about themselves. But this goes far beyond just mere selfishness. So not only do narcissists not give a shit about you, but they also will let you know you ain't shit either. You ain't shit. 
Narcissists live with little to no regard for the feelings and desires of those around them. This means that the entire relationship will be organized around their needs and interests. You can't pick the show or movie to watch on date night because you have shit taste. You also can't choose the restaurant you're eating at because again, you have shit taste. In short, a narcissistic person's needs will always come first in any relationship. And if you stay in a relationship long enough with a narcissist, you will realize that the narcissist will never ask you, how are you doing? They will never genuinely care when you are hurt and they will always put themselves first. So when you try to exert your wants, aspirations, and needs in the relationship, these attempts will not be tolerated by the narcissistic person. And over time, you will come to realize that the focus must always be on them. Our next way on how to spot a narcissist is that they're very predictable. This is what we call being consistently inconsistent. Narcissists are predictable, but only when you're aware of how they operate. When narcissistic people are well-regulated, this looks like their needs being met, resulting in them being less antagonistic and a lot more pleasant to be around. Their needs getting met looks like work going well, being in a fun new relationship where the sex is amazing, or going on some lavish vacation. Unfortunately, this state of being satisfied gets stale very quickly, so they always are in need of new, more, and better. You met their needs and gave them the greatest sex of their life, and f them like a porn Star. So their love felt boundless for a couple of hours. But later that evening, you failed to meet their needs because you were late for dinner. So now they're angry and their relationship is full of tension because you obviously don't love them. You see, they're very predictable. And this leads us directly to our next trait of a narcissist. Their love is transactional. Narcissists will never give time or closeness unless there's a tangible payout. Narcissists enter into relationships playing by a completely different set of rules and expectations. Where you're entering the relationship hoping for connection and intimacy, they're working from a place of control and selfishness. This results in the narcissist emotionally investing far less in the relationship, but deriving much more. The relationship with the narcissist will consist of you perpetually dropping buckets of effort into an empty well. They'll consume you of all your resources while you're left trying to survive on the occasional breadcrumb. Over time, you are deprived of the intimacy, time, closeness, attention, and love that's naturally supposed to nourish a healthy relationship. You learn to accept the breadcrumbs a narcissist feeds you, and over time, you receive less and less as you learn to make do with less and less. The narcissist has left you so emotionally malnourished that sometimes you even express gratitude and appreciation for the scraps of attention a narcissist occasionally gives you. Next is another hallmark of narcissism. The narcissist has no empathy. So there's a belief that narcissists don't have empathy, but that's not actually true. Narcissistic people aren't devoid of empathy. Rather, they have what is called cognitive empathy. This means that narcissists aren't dumb. They understand what empathy is and why someone feels a certain way. But instead of using it to connect with others, they use it to get what they want. Narcissistic empathy is performative. They use it to look good in front of other people and to win them over. Empathy to the narcissistic person is largely transactional, meaning that they will only give it when there's some type of tangible payout. In these cases, they will be able to muster up enough empathy in order to get what they want. But once they get what they want, that empathy fades. Our next way on how to spot a narcissist, they are avid cheaters. Understand that narcissists are never satisfied. They are always in pursuit of something fresh and exciting. This leads them to infidelity, always seeking out a new romantic partner they believe will satiate their never ending appetite. On a side note, their restlessness also leads to other problems like overspending, shopping, and engaging in other frenetic activities. <coughs> Narcissists cheat because they're novelty seekers. Everyone will eventually become stale over time. So, keep in mind that it's not you who's boring. Narcissists get bored and dismissive of everyone eventually because they live in a world that's never enough for them. They want life to be a mixture of perfect ease, validation, and entertainment. But sadly, we all know that life can't always be set up this way. So expect the narcissistic person to always be unsatisfied, unhappy, and bitchy when things aren't engaging or interesting. Understand that narcissists are always envying the greener grass they believe is on the other side. Our next way on how to spot a narcissist, they cannot self-regulate. What this means is that narcissistic people cannot manage their emotions. They don't know how to express their emotions in healthy ways because doing so would be too vulnerable for them, which they see as shameful. Narcissists are not introspective. Their lack of self-awareness leads them to never being able to process and regulate their emotions. This causes them to turn to their relationships. Their lashing out at the people around them is their unprocessed shit rising to the surface, which is why even a mild critique can set off a whirlwind of shame about their imperfections being on full display. These moments hurt their ego, 
and trigger one of their many defense mechanisms. Their rage, arguing, criticism, lying, victimization, guilting, and all the other crazy shit that they do are all the ways that they've learned how to regulate. This craziness allows them to avoid accountability, maintain their delusional beliefs, but most importantly, it allows them to reduce the tension that builds from not properly expressing themselves. Sign number nine on how to spot a narcissist. They're deeply insecure people. The only difference between a deep narcissist and a psychopath is that a narcissist has to deal with a nagging sense of inadequacy. And they do this by overcompensating. You see, at the bedrock of narcissism is insecurity. A narcissist has no real confidence and a very low self-esteem. They have not learned how to love and value themselves, so they try to overcome this by displaying an extreme sense of self-competence. The narcissistic person must always be doing something to prove themselves to others. There's a theatrical quality to every move that they make. Everything they do is for public consumption because putting on a show for others helps them gain attention and shields them against their fear of inadequacy. Next, we have the universal trait that you'll find in all narcissists. They're entitled. Entitlement is the source of all the negative toxic traits you'll see in a narcissist. Narcissistic people believe that they are special. <laughs> One thing I want you to understand is that this specialness goes far beyond just feeling like they're special. Narcissists believe that they're more special than you. Because their minds are set up this way, they believe that while the rules may apply to your basic ass, that doesn't mean that they apply to them. Again, the narcissist believes that they're special, so they must be given special treatment. This leads to many of their relationships being set up in a way where they're able to do whatever they want and say whatever they want, whenever they want. And if you try to hold them accountable, well boy, you better watch out because this is going to make the narcissist very angry. Remember, the narcissist is entitled, so they live in a reality where they're the VIP. It's their world, and you should be grateful your bitch ass is allowed to live in it. Next on our list on how to spot a narcissist is that they're very delusional. A defining characteristic of narcissism is grandiosity. Not just any grandiosity, but grandiosity of the delusional variety. Narcissists believe that they're God's gift to earth, and this leads them to have a sense of superiority over the people around them. What makes these beliefs so delusional is that in most of these cases, narcissistic people actually ain't shit. So there's no actual evidence that supports most of their grandiose beliefs. Despite this, they'll hold on to their delusions regardless of the discomfort or the harm that these beliefs may be causing themselves or the people around them. Next on our list on how to spot a narcissist is that the narcissist needs to control and dominate those around them. Narcissism is all about domination and control. These two things are important to a narcissist because they're the counterbalance to the fragile egos. Narcissists enter into relationships playing by a different set of rules. Where you are hoping for connection and intimacy, they are working from a place of control and selfishness. To the narcissist, you are a tool that they can use that will make their life easier. And the relationship is the pathway they use to gain access to using you. Their desire is to control you, and this will look like needing to control your schedule, appearance, financial resources, and the people you're able to interact with. Give me this. Control doesn't always have to look like a negative thing. It can also look like paying your rent in order to keep you living nearby or offering to pay your bills so you then feel silenced and indebted to them. Their control might also feel spiteful at times. For example, a narcissist might refuse to go to an event that matters to you and then force you not to go either. I want you to understand, narcissists aren't interested in the compromise a healthy relationship requires, and they don't care about the needs of their partner. Relationships largely exist for the narcissist's own benefit and pleasure. <laughs> If they control their relationship, then they have unlimited access to their very own source of attention and validation. Thus, they will always position themselves to have the upper hand in any of their relationships. <laughs> Next on our list on how to spot a narcissist. They are hypersensitive people. What this means is that narcissists are people you always have to walk on eggshells around. If you give them even the mildest of critiques or feedback, you must be prepared for their rapid, rageful, and disproportionate reactions. This can be confusing because they often retaliate by criticizing you in far harsher terms. <laughs> oh, you think you funny, bitch? Narcissists can dish it out, but they cannot take it because jokes more than likely will brush up against one of their many deep insecurities. They can be triggered by even the most benign, neutral comments. This is because they see the world through a lens of paranoid insecurity, able to interpret disrespect in most actions. They have sensors that are always looking for offense and almost anything can be taken personally. They use this because they're consummate victims. I cannot believe you. I trying to confuse others and draw sympathy. You will find that the narcissist often needs reassurance, but of course they're never going to ask for it. Instead, they'll just play the victim and guilt you until it's clear that they need to be soothed. What? I cannot believe you! 
until that everything is going to be all right. But you're not out of the woods yet because even giving reassurance can be a tricky thing. Because if your soothing is too transparent, they will lash out at you for reminding them of their weaknesses and vulnerabilities. I want you to understand, relationships with narcissists are a tricky dance of navigating their sensitivity, arrogance, insecurity, reassurance, shame, and rage. These all combine to make a deadly combo and a reminder that you will never be able to win in these types of relationships. Our next way of how to spot a narcissist. They're very unstable people. What I mean by this is that narcissists are very rarely able to maintain one stable emotion for a long period of time. They wear many different masks, balancing between charming, abusive, fun, sullen, charismatic, enraged, and normal. <laughs> This is because a narcissist's self-appraisal is directly dependent on how things are going in their life. If things are going their way, they're having sex, they're doing fun things, they went shopping, then their self-appraisal will be high. But if things aren't going well, they were ghosted, they were told no, Trump lost the election. <laughs> they will blame the world and shift to viewing themselves as a victim. As a result, you can't always anticipate which version of the narcissist you'll be dealing with, as it doesn't take a lot to destabilize them. And finally, thank God, Jesus Christ, thank you, Jesus. The last sign we can use to spy a narcissist. Narcissists are manipulators. If there's one thing I want you to understand about a narcissist, it's that they are very insecure people. And one of the many ways they choose to regulate their insecurity is through projection, specifically the projection of their shame. Narcissists are a lot of things. Abusers, manipulators, exploiters, cheaters, the list goes on and on. But narcissists will never admit that they're any of these things, which is a step that's required in actually dealing with their shit. So instead of taking accountability for their actions, narcissists will angle to protect themselves by accusing you of being the things that they don't want to see in themselves. A common example of this is the narcissist accusing you of cheating when they themselves are the ones that have been cheating. Projecting the unacceptable aspects of themselves onto other people allows a narcissist to live in a fantasy world. One thing I want you to understand is that narcissists are resolute in their belief of their own goodness, empathy, and all around awesomeness, despite not coming close to actually being any of these things. They will do anything to protect their fragile egos. This includes throwing you under the bus and manipulating you in order to keep up appearances and shelter themselves from the discomfort of their shame. And so there you have it. If you made this far in the video, then you have all the basic understandings of narcissism. You are now equipped to spot a narcissist if they cross your path. As smart as I am, I can't take credit for any of the information presented in this video. I got most of this information about narcissism from, I'm gonna butcher her name, Dr. Ramani Desuva, Desuvala. In her book, It's Not You. That was good. Was it good? That was good. It's from Dr. Romani de Suva I, I, I don't want to offend anyone by mispronouncing her name, <laughs> but it's a great book. <laughs> Calm down. You, you ready? I got this. Are you still recording? Yes. I got most of the information from this book, It's Not You, from Dr. Romani D. I'm not going to attempt to pronounce her last name because I will butcher it. But it's an amazing book that covers narcissism and how to heal from it. So I highly recommend it. I'll include it, uh, uh, an affiliate link to buy it in the description. So you can go there and buy it. And it'll help brother out as well. You know, so that's always a good thing. Anyway, I plan on covering much more information about narcissism that I've gotten from the book in future videos. Also, if you made it this far in the video, then why don't you just go ahead and like and subscribe. It's obvious that you like me and enjoyed the video and were able to get something out of it. So unfortunately, we're at the worst part of this video and that is the time I have to say goodbye. Thank you for watching and making it this far. God bless and I'll see you guys in the next session.